Today I'm going to show you how you can use 2D Design version 2. This software is mainly used by architects or graphic designers to produce uh, product design. Basically I'm just going to run over most of the basic tools you can use on the software. To start with I'm going to show you the ways you can lay out your page. If you double click on the grid tool on the sidebar there it will come up with a grid coordinate window. You can choose the grid angle. If we choose isometric it will give a triangle layout. This mainly helps with providing length, width and depth to three dimensional shapes. We can choose oblique shapes but the design I'm going to show you today is the orthogonal which is the square sort of layout. You can also change the grid appearance so the style you can create with the dots that are on default. You can create medium crosses or you can use the lines which will give a squared line paper sort of view. But for this design I'm going to show you how to apply within a dot style. Furthermore there are two different styles of lock which will lock the cursor to the screen. If I click the draw line I can give you an example of how these two work. The step lock will allow the cursor to uh, produce lines randomly on the page in any given position. The grid lock will snap the cursor to a dot on the page to another dot to give accurate lines. Preferably the grid lock is the most accurate lock of all. So we'll stick with the grid lock. Now I'm going to show you how you can produce circles. If you click the left mouse button, drag the cursor away from the original point and the circle size increases. The closer we make the cursor to the origin, the smaller the circle and the further away the cursor, the bigger the circle. So we're just going to make a medium sized circle and click the left mouse button to secure that location. You can produce different size circles that intersect the original circle of course and you can just mess around with that really and produce different size circles. Next I'm going to show you how you can produce arcs which give you curves and bends pretty much. For this you can just drag a line down, click the left mouse button and drag the cursor to develop a curve of your choice. So I'm going to make a curve say like that and I'm also going to make another curve on the end here. So if you produce a curve say like this I can pretty much make a jigsaw puzzle style of shape. So we can just connect them up and you can see that it's produced a regular shape. The shapes tool allows you to produce box shapes such as squares and rectangles. And the path tool allows you to create a curve under a specific path. So you can make squiggles and you can bring that round to just make a really wavy curvy shape and then just double click to snap that all down so you've finished making the path. Um, you can also add shape colours by clicking the boundary fill box. This will bring up a window which you will have to set a shape colour and a line colour. The shape colour, if you click the coal button like there, it will bring up a list and a range of colours. We're going to go for a nice vibrant colour of green. It's obviously, um, you can choose your own colour for it, but we're just going to go with a nice green. And you, will, and you will then get a locate cursor up here. This locate cursor only means that you have to select an area where you wish to apply the tool to. So we're just going to click the centre of this shape here. And you can see there it's not allowing me to produce that shape colour because not all the boundaries are closed, which means it's not a closed circuit shape, so not all the 
so there's gaps within the shape which breaks down the tool so I'm just going to choose a closed circuit shape which I know of and this is allowing me to do that with the circle you can see it highlights with a purple color which just basically shows you the area of the shape which you are highlighting to apply the tool to you'll get a box appear with an any islands question basically we don't want to add any more islands because if we add islands we're going to overcomplicate the, the tool so we're going to click no and you can see there it's applied the color to the selected area like shown if you want to change the color say for these circles here that join up with the green shape all we need to do is click off the original boundary field tool click back on it change the color on the window say to a yellow click OK select the area you want to apply the tool to and you can see that it applies it and then just repeat the step if we want to change the color again so we'll go for a blue and you'll get the shape and we'll just color a square as well next you can include text by clicking the ABC illustration on the toolbar there if we just click a random area and we click a small quote if you make the text too long then it's going to overfill the text uh, the page with a load of text so we're just going to go for a basic quote one of my personal ones if we click on settings it will come up with a font setting window we can basically choose all the different fonts we want to use so we're going to go with a nice comic sans and we're going to make it bold we're going to apply a text color with red you can choose obviously we're going to add a drop shadow if you like which will add a shadow color to the design you can choose the fill color so we're going to go with a burgundy red to make it look like a dark red shadow and here you can choose the position of the shadow so you can make it the top right top left bottom left or the bottom right preferably we'll go for the bottom right just to see how it works and the size spacing window here just basically shows uh, where we're going to position the text and how we're going to align it but we don't need to worry about that in detail so we'll just go with what we've got click OK click OK again and you can see there it's produced a text with a red shape fill and a burgundy dark red shadow fill if you want to reposition any shape at all all you need to do is click the cursor tab drag and highlight over a shape click the middle yellow square and then just drag it across the screen you can see it's given a grey border for the shape outline of the shape there just to show where it could be positioned so we're going to click there click off it to snap it in place and you can see that it's low repositioned most of the text and most of the shapes okay uh, furthermore you can add dimensions to your shapes to give measurements for example say for this square here we want to apply a measurement to this side we're going to highlight over the, the side we want to use a measure we're going to drag it outwards and we're going to click yes now I'm just going to zoom in so you can see what's going on and you can see there it's set a 40 millimeter side length to that shape we can do that again to the circle All we need to do is find an edge and directly cut it in half like cutting a pizza drag it out one place and you can see there it's given a diameter of that side uh, furthermore you can add constant points to your uh, design if you need to just to ensure that you know which area of the shape you're going to use a bit like a dot to dot so you can set points so you don't forget where you're going so we're just going to connect them up just gives you an outline as to where to position your line you can see there I've made a slight error of that line there but I'll explain that in a minute okay so you can see there it's completed the clip uh, it's completed the uh, constant point area there now to delete that certain part there to make the complete shape we can do this in multiple ways if we hold in on the delete tab it gives you five different options to delete a certain object you can delete an object as a whole 
You can delete parts of an object between two intersecting points. You can delete objects by the box, so you can delete squares and rectangles. You can delete the lasso, or you can delete objects by their clip path. For this, we're going to delete parts by intersection. So we're just going to highlight, hover over that, and then let go of the cursor. Um, then we are going to click on the point we want to delete. Just click it, and you can see there it's disappeared. And if we want to delete certain points here, we can do that like that. Like that, you can see it's deleting the line if we want. And furthermore, we can transform some of the shapes, which means it will either replace a shape with a different shape, or it can repeat and duplicate that shape into how many repeats you like. To do that, all we need to do is select, excuse me, accept the cursor tool, highlight over the shape you want to apply the transformation to, click transform, and then we're going to click repeat, and we're going to repeat it three times. You can choose how many repeats you like, it doesn't really matter. We're going to click OK, and then the system's asking us to show where we're going to apply these transformations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a diagonal line to show that the repeats will burst out this way from the original shape. And I'm going to make the line a certain length because if we make the line too short, then they're not going to be spaced out. If we make it too long, they'll be too spaced out. So we'll make the line about four to five units across. And you can see there that it's created three duplicate shapes in that direction that we wanted. We can do that in an opposite direction if we like. And we can do it forward. And we can do it from the side and so forth. Furthermore, you can reposition a shape uh, by the on a certain snapped area of the grid. To do that, all we need to do is hover over a shape we want to apply the uh, alignment to, click the space tool, and then it gives us a window of alignment. We can choose between the left, bottom, right, top, center of the page. So for this, I'm going to align it to the top of the page. I'm going to click OK. And I'm just going to click a location. And you can see there it snapped it to the top of the grid. Furthermore, you can add three dimensional effects and apply it to a 2D shape. So, all we're going to do is I'm going to quickly drag that shape to an area. I'm going to apply the 3D effects. And we'll have a window pop up asking us for the depth of the three dimension. So we're going to make it 30 millimeters, just to make it a bit, you know, not too big. We're going to retain the original shape just to show you how it works. I'm going to click OK, and then we're going to click a direction. So you can see there that it's applied a three-dimensional shape towards the 2D shape. You can see the same the same length and width of the original two-dimensional shape. And then finally, you can create clip paths. Now, clip paths work by producing a number of uh, lines, and you can complete that shape without having to manually do it. You can just double click, and you can see there that the system has already closed the circuit on that uh, chosen shape. You can also do this for arcs and curves. For curves, to make oval shapes, for example. All you do is just make a slight curve, double click it, and you can see there it's made an egg oval shape for that, that curve. You can do this for arcs as well to create circles. If you create a small arc, double click, it's produced a circle for you. And you can do that again. And that pretty much covers all the basic steps on using 2D design. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to ask, and thank you for listening.